universal class. Did you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this problem, it was in your uh, quiz, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was only include the shear and bending moment diagram. But right now, what we'll do, uh, we'll figure out the stress in the beam. So we'll figure out the stress in the beam. That means uh, we'll apply two formula. Number one, uh, sigma equal to my or mc divided by i, this one. Other one is tau equal to uh, EQ by IB. Those two equations will apply to figure out the stress in the beam. And we'll use the shear and bending diagram because this B is coming from the shear diagram and this M is coming from the bending diagram. So let's see what they're saying. It's saying, a fine maximum bending and shear stress in the beam. Also, fine bending and shear stress at point A. So they like to figure out the maximum bending and shear stress and also at point A. And cross section of the beam is given right over here. So in sigma, where it is get maximum? Sigma, it get maximum at the outer fiber. That means right over here and right over here, your sigma will be maximum. And at the neutral axis, say for example, we are saying this is neutral axis. In that case, that neutral axis, sigma will be zero because y value is zero. But tau is opposite. Tau will be maximum at uh, this location. But it will be zero at outer fiber, also it will be zero at bottom outer fiber. But sigma at outer fiber will be maximum. Sigma max. Outer fiber means at the top and also the bottom will be maximum. But sigma at the neutral axis is zero. But anyway, how we can solve it, this problem? At first, uh, you need to know the bending shear stress formula in the beam. That is sigma equal to mc over i, tau equal to e q by i v. That you need to know. Then you need to know uh, how you get the shear force and bending moment, maximum bending moment. That means you need to draw the bending moment and shear diagram. And to draw the bending moment shear diagram, you need to figure out the reaction force in the in the beam. So let's see, I already solved it. And you might uh, solve it too, right? Some of you did. So you see right over here, no axis is given. So you need to consider put your axis. You can think this is X axis and upward you can think this is Y axis then along this direction will be Z axis. And this beam, how many section it has? Like this one section, and this is one section. So two, three, four. So you need to consider four time X. That means you have to consider one time in, the, in between right over here, between right over here, over here, and at the end. So four time you need to consider X. So let's see. Then uh, reaction. Obviously right over here will be two reaction, right? One is upward, other one is along X direction. Right over his roller, there will be only one reaction. So I solve it. Right over here, you see. Uh, we put x along this direction, upper direction y, this direction z. And right over here, I 
only show one reaction that is not right. We need to show other one, then it will be perfect uh, free body. Okay, but ultimately this value will be zero. And I put only R1, but it's better if you put R1 Y because it's working along upward direction. So this one you can put like R1 Y. Similarly, right side you can put R2 Y because I designated this one as a point two, this one is a one, or you can put point A, B, what will be one, okay? So then I took moment at point one. Then I figure out the reaction force 48. And do I need to explain it? How I got uh, 48? Anyone? Okay, you take a uh, bending moment at this uh, point, then you have R2. This R2 rotating anti-clockwise. We are saying uh, clockwise is positive. So R2 into five, which is a three plus one plus one, five. And this 60 is rotating anti-clockwise. So this also minus, but the distance is one, 16 to one. Plus this bending moment, in respect to point one, it is rotating clockwise, so plus 120. Now you have left uh, this distributed load. So how much is load? 40 into three, the distance. And this load will work through center of this distributed load. That means four into three, that is the load, four into three. And what is the distance? This is three, so this must will be 1.5. So this is the distance. So after solving, we get 48 kilonewton, R2. Then you take summation of Fy equal to zero. You get R1 equal to 133. Sir, can you please explain how we get 1.5 again? 1.5. 1.5. Uh, or we are could... take, considering this amount of distributed load. So at first, you figure out the force. How much will be force? Force F equal to 40, 40 kilonewton per meter. What is the distribution throughout the three meter level? Yes, sir. So you multiply by three, that means it will be 120 kilonewton, right? Yes, sir. We are taking moment. What is that moment? Force into distance. So you have to take, figure out the force and figure out the distance. So force we already figured out, 120. So this is 120, four into three. Now you need to figure out the distance. What this force what? You are considering total force, right? So we'll think that this total amount of force will work through center of this distance. The distance is three, so it will work through along this line. That means distance from here to here should be 1.5, and from here to here is 1.5. So we are taking moment over here. So force Sir, how can we very much here? It will work only center. What do you say? Sir, how can we very much here? It will work only center. This is the simple thing. Like you are sitting here, you learn from your intermediate. Also, you learn from your uh, engineering mechanics. You know, if you object, where the gravity work through the center of gravity, right? So for example, you have a irregular shape object. You have W, weight W. So where this weight will work? It will work through the... Uh, okay, sir, I understand. You understand? Yes, sir. Now, this is symmetry. Like this kind of object, we don't know how it was seen. We need to figure out, right? But this is, you already know. This is the uh, distance is, what does it mean? That means some of breeze is laying over here. So how will we see it? That's middle of the CZ work, downward, okay? But say your distribution, you have brick like, you have sunk of brick in the horizontal direction, then you have vertical direction. 
in that case you can act say immediately that your cz will work through at the middle of this distance in that case right over here weight is more as the toward the left so cz might be around this location might be a little bit upward so you need to figure out in that case okay clear yes sir okay so we got r on and r2 but i didn't show you how to figure out the this r on x reaction force so you just take that summation or sum of fx equal to 0 then you will get r on x there is no other force so r on x equal to ultimately coming 0 that's why i didn't show you <coughs> now you need to draw the bending moment and shear diagram So this is the shear diagram, and uh, this is the bending moment diagram. I think I need to show you right how we got the bending moment and shear diagram. This is the way uh, you draw in the exam. How do you draw? At the top, you will draw this free body. Bottom of this free body, you will have this figure. Okay. So let's see how we can. Uh, make the shear and bending moment diagram and figure out the right over here all the reaction force okay. this one Copy this figure in the right side. That will be clear to me. You can see the figure, right? Yes, okay. sir. So, what we'll do? We'll draw the shear and bending point diagram. So, all these equations should be on the right side, right? Like this equation should be on the right side, then in left side you draw the bending point diagram. So you need to consider each section. So at first you consider the first section of the beam. That means this this area. So this is length is one meter. You start from the left side. So what you will do at first? At first you will draw a line which represent the not. It should not be at all. The line of the axial length of the beam, or I can say uh, only a line, not the arrow. So this is length of the beam representing. Then you show that this is x-axis, and obviously vertical direction. You show the your y-axis. Then uh, this will be zero, right? This origin will be zero. Then you say this is by, by unit is kilonewton, and the x, this is x. I did mistake, I didn't show the unit, but our unit right over here is meter. So in the x, we need to show meter. In the bracket, we we'll show meter. Okay, then this is all. Right. Now, what do you do? You'll make a uh, light line in each section with, with the scale and pencil. This is one section. This is one section. This is another one. This is another one. Okay, now you draw the shear diagram. So shear diagram, I am saying, I'm set for this distance, I'm setting in the any location. It might go over here or might go over here. That's why I'm just saying X. Then I will look into the left. I see I have only one force is six to kilo newton and working downward. So this is negative, right? So I'm saying Vx equal to 60. So this Vx, what is the value? Between distance, if x equal to zero and x equal to one in between this distance. So you need to put the limit. 
And you can put one more line over here. I just avoid it. We say I'm saying V X V X equal to minus sixty. So if X equal to zero, that means you can say V zero equal to how much? Still minus sixty. And if V equal to one, one still equal to minus sixty. Then it both should be in the same horizontal line. Okay. So this two line, this line, I uh, skip, but you need to put over here this two line. Okay. So you put this line. Okay. What does it mean? That means when x zero, your shear force is sixty. And it is negative. That means downward, right? So downward, we say right over here minus 60. But it is one x equal to one, still minus 60. That means you got the first line. So your shear force coming right over here. Okay. Now, second portion. Second portion means this portion, a distributed loaded portion, right? This portion means from here to here. So you can sit anywhere. You can look over here or look any distance. You can sit and look to the left. Say you are sitting right over here. What is your reference line? From the left is distance is also X. Then you look to the left. So how many force you have? You look carefully, we have total three force. Number this 60 working downward, then 132 this working upward, then this must force. This must force. Now, obviously, this force working downward, right? So you will have again, I'm saying Vx equal to minus 60 because working downward plus 132. Then this must wait is working downward. What I need over here, I need this distance, distance from here to here. What is this distance? I'm saying x minus one because from here to here is x. From this distance is x. And distance from here to here is one. So this must will be x minus one. So x minus one into my distribution. My distribution is 40, right? So we put into 40. So this is my shear diagram equation. Now this equation is valid until which region? X should be greater than one, but less than four. So you have put this limit. Okay, now you put x equal to one over here. You put x equal to one, what is the value you are getting? You are getting uh, 72, right? Then you put x equal to four, you get minus 40, 48. Okay, now you, you came in over here, how much our number? Our number was 60, right? Right over here we got minus 60. So came in over here, still minus 60. So minus 60 plus 132 hours, coming plus 72. So from here, you directly go upward, how much upward until once uh, 72 say this much. So this is your second uh, point, okay? And you also got over here from the equation, you also got 72. That means in this reason we are right, we don't need any mistake. Then you put V equal to four, that means X equal to four, you got minus 48. So X equal to four means right over here. So you got, this is minus 60, minus 48, me around right over here. So you mark that region with uh, this sign, 
one second. This is 60. I'm saying right over here. So you add it now. So this one is minus 48. Let me write now. So this one is 48. Okay. Now we we'll see this line, shear line. How much shear force right over here? Right over here. Zero, right? So if certain location shear force zero, that location bending moment come maximum. So you need to figure out this distance later on. Okay, the how much from here to here. <coughs> and we'll figure out, okay? So this region is, is over. Now, uh, shear force from here to here, there is bending moment, but no shear force. So we can think that for shear diagram, we have only one reason not the two reason but for bending moment it have two reason but from here to here we will think that only one part because there is no shear force from here to here there is nothing there is a bending but we think that is we will not consider bending when you draw the shear diagram okay so you sit in some location for example you are sitting in a right over here and looking to the left what is your distance is x from the left side so how much force in left side you see you have several force number one this minus 60 so you put 60 minus 60 this is one force then this one 132 working upward right so this 132 is over here 132 then how much force over here 14 into 3 right 120 by working downward so minus 14 to 3. now after you put x equal to 6 total distance from here to here equal to 6 x equal to 6 you get minus 48 okay so minus 48 that right over here minus 48 again uh, you coming x equal to 6 over here you get minus 48 so this minus 48 plus you have 148. So that means plus, so zero, right? Minus 48 plus 48. Ultimately, you came in over here. So now you just uh, connect the line. So the shear diagram coming from here to here, okay? And you write down that this is 48. Over here is uh, 60. Over here is 72. Then you write down the vy max equal to 72. Instead of v, I put vy. What is the reason? I put vy because shear force working along y direction, that's why I put vy. So any question from uh, shear force diagram? Anyone? Any question? No, sir. No, OK. So now let's uh, draw the uh, bending moment diagram, OK? And other thing, I told you that we need to figure out this distance from here to here. Where shear force coming zero, how we figure out. So this is our second equation, it's coming from this equation. If you apply for this point, that means Vx will be zero. So if I put Vx equal to zero right over here, then we are getting actually, if put Vx equal to zero, then solve x, x equal to 2.8. 2.8 from the left edge. So from here to here is 1.8. This needed because this point shear force will be maximum. You just put x equal to 2.8, then you get maximum value of uh, bending one. Over here, shear zero, that means bending one will be maximum. So now we need to draw the bending one diagram. Let's see how we can draw the uh, bending one diagram. So it's better. If I took this equation right over here and took this bending moment diagram, so copy right over here, that will be easier to explain. Okay. So at first, 
move in this region. So sitting over here, right over here, you looking to the left. How many force you have? Only 60 working downward. And this will be negative, right? And because this beam will bend like that, right? Because right over here is support or working downward. So you put some water, water will fall down bottom. So that means this uh, bending will be negative. So that's what, how much bending? Force into distance, 60 into x. So I will put 60 into x. What is the value? x equal to zero, and the greater than zero, less than one. So right over here, you put x equal to zero. That means you're getting m zero equal to zero. You put x equal to one, you got minus 60. So you ultimately, what happens, you draw the axis. So this is your length of the beam. Um, this is your y-axis. Along y-axis, you'll put mz, right? Your beam in x, y plane. This is the x. Oh, I'm sorry, y, this is the x. So bending one will be mz plane. So it will be mz. So that the arrow, you write the y-axis, you'll say mz, and then you put the unit. So I put unit, kilo newton, meter. And this is along this direction, horizontal direction, this is x. So you need to put unit of x. So you put the x, x in the bracket, you put the unit meter. And I need to put it, but I forgot. Say so I'm putting x equal to meter. What happened in Seems like I did it something. And it is it or something, I believe it seems like all things have come. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. I need to close it without saving the file. Then I need to reopen it. Screen has stopped to share. Okay, one second. Close it. So we are right here. We would like to draw the bending diagram. Right, we have bending diagram right over here. Copy. Put over here. Okay. So for this section, you are sitting right over here. So 16 to X, then you got this one. The screen the has a channel. Oh, you're not seeing the screen? No, sir. Maybe share. What about now? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, what do you do? At first, you draw a line, length of the beam, right? You draw a length of the beam. Then you say this is X. And in the bracket, you should put remit. I forgot to put it in meter. And upward direction, you put the MZ. MZ equal to you put the unit kilonewton meter. This upward direction, okay. This is y axis, this is x axis. Now, from the, this location, you are looking to our left. See, you have only 60. And you got it that when m equal to x equal to 0, bending moment 0. So you got this point. When x equal to 1, 
then pending moment you are getting minus 60. So you have two points. No point one, then this point. And what you see, C, M, X equal to minus 16 to X. So this is the equation of straight line. So you just draw the straight line. Now you need to sit down in the second region of the beam. So right over here. You look in the left side, then how much force you have. We have three force. How many force? You let me uh, show you. We have this 60. We have 132. Then we have this mass amount of distributed load. So your equation mx will be, let's say, mx equal to at first minus 16 to x, right? Then plus 132, no force, other force in right over here. 132 working upward. So plus 132 into distance. So what will be distance? This distance, right? That means from here to here. We are sitting over here. So from left is to this distance is x. And from here to here is y. So your distance will be x minus one. One second. Your distance should be x minus one. And there is a limit. What is your limit? This is your limit. x less than one. I'm, I'm sorry, greater than one, but less than four. Now, right over here, you put, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we are, what are we missing over here? Anyone? Sir, OJ, distribution, distribution force. Distributed now. load, yeah. We, we just took two force, but still we have distributed portion. And distribution portion working downward, so minus. minus. So at first, you need to figure out the force. Right, so what is the force? 40 into uh, x minus 1. 40 into x, good. 40 into x minus 1. Then distance that x minus force. 1 by 2. Then distance should be x minus 1 by 2 divided by 2. Then the, you put the limit, right? So, and right over here, you see the x square coming x minus one whole square. That means moment distribution between this region will be parabolic. And if you put x equal to one, you got uh, minus 60. That means you are right, you start from here. x equal to four, minus 24. So you're getting minus 24. So now you're getting only two point, these two point. Now which way you draw? I draw upward. But why I should not draw like that? I will figure out. That's why you need to figure out to take data in intermediate point. But it is better to take it at x equal to 2.8 because over there, share was zero. And if any point share zero, when you want to become maximum. So you put m28 equal to what is coming. m28 is coming 4.8. So obviously over here, I put 4.8. And make sure that distance from here to here is 2.8, okay? Then, so you, you got this 48, that means you got the third point. Now you just add this point. And make sure you make the round curve, not a straight line. Don't, don't draw the triangle. That means I'm saying you can draw like that. If you draw like that, it will be wrong because we, we have x squared in the distribution. So you have until this mass we got, right? From here, okay. Over here we got four minus 24. <clears throat> now we need to consider this x right over uh, over here this is and look to the left 
From this region, you look to the left, we have how many ports? You see, we have this 60, we have this 132, then we have this distributed load, 120, right? 140 into three, this one. And this distributed load, actually how is working? It is working through the center of this uh, point, right? So you sitting over here, look toward left. Ultimately, you have three force. This 60, 130, and the distributed load. So let's see what is our second equation look like. So second equation, I have to delete all the uh, drawing. So number one, 60 into X. So this mass, ultimately, you need to carry remain the same. You see, first equation is one minus 60x. This one it was carrying all the way, also over here, also in the next equation two. Okay. So right over here, 60 into x plus 100, 130 into x minus one. Now you figure out this force. What is this force? 14 into 14 three. three. So this is my force. Now you need to figure out the distance. This is working yeah. through this point. So what is my distance? 2.5. From here to this x is x minus, not 2.5. x minus 2.5. From here to here is x, right? So x minus one, you have to count this point, this distance, right? So x from left edge to this side is x. So x minus one minus 1.5 because this distance is 1.5. So I put x minus one minus 1.5, right? Into This is not into this all this is your equation. Any question over here? Anyone? No, any question? No, sir. Clear, right? Yes, sir. You just figure out that this must force. Okay. So now we put m equal to four. That means this point still you are getting minus 24. And over here you got minus 24. That means you, you are right in this point. Whatever you found in previous equation, that is right. Now you put x equal to five. One, three, and this one, that means five. So you put x equal to five, <coughs> then you are getting minus 74. So you minus 74, you just put point. They say this point equal to minus 72. Now look to the equation. So this equation, there is no x square. So obviously this is straight line. So you just connect this line to this line. So they say you have t cap. 72. Yeah, okay. What do you say? Yes, two. Okay. Two, two, two. Oh. Kettle, that was in your filter. Okay, uh, somebody help. I said filter. Your mic, please. Filter. Labon. Uh, filter. Jar. Now. Uh, please unmute your uh, mic. Somebody is uh, making noise. Okay. Now. Right over here, you're getting 72. Minus 72. But when is minus 72, you have plus 120. So minus 72 plus 120. So you will get plus 48. So you're coming over here immediately, you need to move upward. So right over here, you get plus 48. Now you need to figure out the next section. That means in between right over here, between right over here, next section. You look at the leg section, how many bending moment you have. We have bending moment for this force, for this one, for this distributed load, and also you have this 
and let's go ahead. So let's figure out the equation. You see minus 60, 130 minus one, that means the same equation. Also this one is carrying out the same thing. Only you are adding plus 100 point. So right to a plus 100 point. What is value? Five to six. So you put m equal to five, then you see you are getting 48. That means you are right. We are getting 48 over here. And m equal to, you put six, then ultimately you're getting zero. That's right. Because right over here, there is no uh, bending moment. Or it has Sir, to be why zero. 120 is plus? How to say? Why? 120 is plus. 120 plus. Yes, sir. Respect to this point, okay. This is pushing down when you're considering the left side. Respect to this push side, push. it is pushing, pushing down. down. So it should be negative, sir. That's why it is positive. If if he pushing down the beam, then the beam will bend like that, right? Respect to right side. Then it is you're bending moment right over here. So respect to this side, this bending moment is okay, positive, sir. right? Okay. But yes, respect sir. to this side, this moment will be negative because you put water over here, it will fall down. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. So that's why 120 is positive. Other than see for 122, when you went positive, why? Rotating clockwise, right? And right over here, you see 120 also clockwise. It is also positive. So both uh, any way you can think. So you got this one, and there is no x square. So obviously, this is the equation of a straight line. So it's just kind of a line. So from the bending moment diagram, you got maximum bending moment one seventy two negative right over here, and shear force right over here you got minus I'm sorry plus seventy seventy two. Uh, in the problem, what they say? Figure out the maximum bending and shear stress in the in the beam. Now, what is our formula? Our formula to figure out the stress, that means uh, sigma. Sir, I'm going to take a look at the class. OK, just one second. Sigma C divided by I. This is our one formula. Other formula is tau. Tau equal to VQ divided by IB, right? So in both formula, we have the I, right? So this I, moment of inertia, we need to figure out. In the beam, we give you only a cross section. We don't give you the I. So how we calculate the I? And how we figure out the CG of the beam? You need to figure out two things, OK? Um, so we can finish only this much, how to figure out the uh, CG of the cross section, okay? What is that? Why you see, you see XCG should be symmetrical. XCG should be lie at the center of the cross section because left side and right side, your area is same along this line, okay? But YCG not in the middle because in the bottom area is less over the area is high so it will be around at the close to the top so we need to figure out first ycg and how we can figure out the ycg from the bottom edge we'll figure out the ycg this is the formula ycg is equal to sum of area into ycg divided by acg so this beam cross section we divide three area a number this area, this one, and this one. So we just use this formula. Take the top area. How will get area equal to 
100 into 20, this is the area, right? 100 into 20. And what this YCG? YCG should be lie at the middle. So I have to take distance from bottom to middle of this line. So total distance how much? 120 from here to here, minus 10, so 110. This is 110, okay? Now take the middle one. What is the middle one area? 20 into 80. So this is area, 20 into 80. And what will be CZ? Is CZ will be lie from bottom S to middle of this point. That means you, you have to take right in between right over here in the middle, right? So this distance is 40 from here to here, CZ, 40. Because middle of 80 is 40, plus 20, 60. So right over here is 60. I put 60. Now you take the bottom area. What is the area? 16 to 20. And YCG will be 10. So I put 10. So you get the YCG 68.33. If this is the CG, then from the bottom is your YCG, this is CG, 68.33. Now we can figure out this distance. If this is C2, that means 120 minus C2 YCG. 120 minus C1, you get C2 51.67, okay? So we can uh, stop it here, right? Yes, sir. I thought uh, still we have a lot of things we need to figure out, but uh, it seems like I have to take one more class to finish this chapter. Okay. okay, so we are stopping over here. Okay. Okay, sir. And this uh, uh, PDF five, I already give you, right? For this math. Did you look? I already posted this. Uh,